Hello everyone. In our last video, we solved this problem with Bobby J at a shot put meet, and they wanted us to figure out what's the horizontal distance that the shot travels. And we solved this by using this equation right here, because this would give us the time for the total flight, and we actually had to solve that quadratically. And I understand that some parts of that may not come intuitively to everybody. It, it takes a while to really understand what's going on, especially in relation to setting up your vectors properly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve the problem through another method. I'm going to solve it by breaking the motion into two parts, okay? And think of it as if you're running a 100 meter dash and it takes you three seconds to run the first 40 meters and then it takes you four seconds to run the remaining 60 meters what was the total time that it took you to run that 100 meters well naturally you just add those two times for those two different for those two segments so this problem is the same if we find the time it takes for this object i'm going to let right here be its maximum height if we find the time it takes for this object to go from 1.6 meters above the ground to its maximum height, and then also find the time it takes for this object to fall from its maximum height to the ground, if we add those two times up, that's actually gonna give us the total time of flight. And that comes naturally to me. That's what I would do. That's actually how I solve problems before I began to understand this way. So, I'm going to draw an example here, or a sketch of the problem. So, this is some height y. Actually, I need to make a bit more space for that. So, I'll draw this at the bottom here. So, I'm some height above the ground. And I'm going to call this point my y max. And this is still my ground. This object falls. Okay, so I need to find the time it takes for the object. I'll call this T1. I'll call this T2. Time to reach its maximum height. Time to fall from its maximum height. And we can find the time it takes to, take to get to its maximum height. Actually, I'll, I'll also set my vectors. Down is positive. Sorry, down is negative up is positive. So I know at an object when it reaches its maximum height its velocity is zero. So I can use this equation to help me out. Minus gt and I know the final velocity is zero and I can find the initial velocity. Minus this is simply v naught sine theta minus g t. So t is v naught sine theta divided by g. And v naught sine theta is 8.67 divided by 9.81, giving us a time of 0 0.88. 3, 8 seconds. When I'm doing problems like these where I have different parts and I'm going to have to use both of the answers, I like to express my answer in as many decimal places as I can because you, you introduce an error and it messes with your final answer. Because if you weren't to round this or if you were to round this to maybe one decimal place and you went over to the second part and you rounded that second time to the second decimal place or first decimal place, again, when you added those two, you'd get a different time than you got when we solved it with the quadratic. Okay, and I'll explain that at the end of this video. I'll show you it. So this is the time it took to get to its maximum height. This is T1. So now what I need to know is exactly how high is this object above the ground. I'm still taking the ground as my reference. So initially this object was 1.6 meters above the ground and it took this object 0.8838 seconds to go from 1.6 meters to some additional height to the ground. So in order to find that change in displacement I can actually use 
I can do this two ways. I can either use this equation because I have the time and I know all of these other variables, or I can use this equation because, again, I know that at the final height or at the maximum height that the final velocity is zero. And again, I know the initial velocity. However, I'll use with this, I'll use the change in displacement is equal to V Y naught times T minus one half G T squared. And I'm looking to find the final height. And what's my initial height? My initial height is one point six meters above the ground. That has not changed because it left his hand at 1.6 meters above the ground and we are taking our actual ground level as our zero. Okay? So everything is measured with respect to this line. And this just becomes an, an equation where you just have to plug in the values plus y naught. So this is again v naught sine theta t minus half g t squared plus y naught. And putting in those numbers, we have 15.5. Well, since I've already calculated v naught sine theta, I'll just use the value for that 8.67 times 0 0.8838 minus half of 9.81 is 4.905 so minus 4.905 times 0 0.8838 plus 1.6 and all of this gives us a time of 5.43 5 point sorry not a time a height of 5.43 meters so this height up here this is 5.43 meters so the maximum height that the shot travels after it comes out of his hand is 5.43 meters above the ground and if you want to find out how far it traveled from with respect to bobby j's hand you can su just subtract 5.43 i'm oh, sorry you can subtract 1.6 meters from 5.43 so now that we have this maximum height we need to find the time it takes for the shot to fall from this maximum height to the ground and we can use this equation equation again because we know something we know what our initial height is here so at max height we know that initial velocity in the y is zero because that's the condition for an object to be at its maximum height the velocity in the y must be zero we know what our y naught is. Our y naught is 5.43. We know our y, our final height is zero, which is the ground. So we can do some things here. Okay, so y minus y naught is equal to zero. Zero minus half g t squared. So our final height is zero, so we have negative y naught is equal to negative half g t squared. If you've ever done any of these kinematics problems and you're solving for time, or you have to square something but it's negative, go back and check your vectors. Because this object is going down, correct? So our initial height is up here, and our final height is down here, so it makes sense that we should have a negative here. And of course, gravity is also going down. So these cancel and we end up with a positive. So solving, t is just 2y0 divided by g. That's the time it takes for this object to get to the bottom or to the ground. So just to make some space, 
I will erase this. So now our time to fall from the maximum height is 2 times 5.3 divided by 9.81 and that gives us 1.0521 seconds so I'll, this should actually be T2. And I want to find the total time of flight. So this is T1 plus T2, or the time it takes to get to its maximum height, plus the time it takes to fall from its maximum height to the ground. So this is 0 0.8838 seconds. I'll need to put those units there. Plus 1.0521. And this this becomes 1.953 am i writing these properly no 0.3959 which is approximately 1.94 seconds and again we want to use x is equal to v naught x times t. So if I were to compute this, I would get x is equal to 15.5 cosine 34 times 1.94 and this would give us 24.93 meters or this would be approximately 24.9 meters above the ground so you see that both ways give you the same answer the first method is quicker you do one big calculation and it gives you the time this one is a bit more work actually some persons may not consider this the cleanest method of doing it however sometimes that first method may not come naturally to you this may come naturally and at the end of the day once the physics is consistent you should have no issue and as you're watching this I want you to understand why I do what I do don't try to memorize what I do understand my thought process and if I didn't explain something properly or maybe I can go into more depth with some of these problems, please leave it down in the comments. Once again, thank you for coming. Have a wonderful day.